Hey everybody, welcome back. Hi. Um, trying a new camera angle today, so um, you're you're gonna I'm gonna be like the big giant talking head, um, and I'm gonna do a little bit of an adjustment here. Let's see, all of a sudden we've got this huge dark space on there. How about if we just move this up? That will work. Um, have this shadow on my page, but um, there, I think that will be better. Just playing a little bit with uh, my setup here as we, or as I try to adapt and figure out a solution for showing you my workspace while I'm actually working. So yay, I think we have that figured out for the time being until my new video clamp comes from uh, comes comes from Amazon. So welcome back. I know I'm a little bit early this morning. Uh, it looks like it's 10 o'clock right now. Uh, but this is Journal Through It. I'm Kim Santini. You can't see my face, but these are my hands. Hi, they're waving at you. Um, and I am going to share with you a lesson today about uh, using collage and share some of the tips about how I use collage in my own work as a means of inspiration. Uh, we are going to be collaging on loose pieces of paper as well as inside our books and I think uh, what I share with you today is going to be enough to keep you busy all afternoon long if you want. I, I hope so at least. Um, but before we jump in, I wanted to see how everybody was doing and give you an opportunity to chime in and say say hello or good morning uh, and let you know that after I present the lesson I will be scrolling through your comments and answering your questions live before uh, I end the session. So feel free to uh, leave any comments or questions over on the sidebar so that I can see them and comment on them this morning. Um, I loved Artist Lesson yesterday. If you had an opportunity to watch that, uh, you I'm sure you fell in love with it too. Uh, one of the things that she asked about was um, our, what, our, um, what our little joys were. And so I pulled some of my little joys out to share with you guys. I have a thing about little toys. I don't know what it is, but I love Little toys, they make me feel very joyful. They remind me of a simpler time when uh, I was younger. And I also love things with a sense of humor, like this Ken Barbie, just his head without a body. This has provided endless laughs. It continues to. Um, he travels around the house and gets impaled on different things. It's pretty funny. Um, and the cat, Da Vinci, is convinced that this is his little joy, joyful thing because he wants to eat it right now. And I would not, I better put it down because I think he's going to leap onto the table. So um, I loved how she connected her joy of, of an orb or a sphere, connected that to her artwork um, and the whole process of, come on Devin, let's move these. The whole process of making art using shapes and things that give you joy or fascinate you um, is a really valid one and it's actually a thread of what I'm presenting today. Ironically, uh, I didn't even realize or catch on that connection until this morning when I was reviewing her note from yesterday. So anyway, um, as a recap of where we were, or what I did with you last time, we drew butterflies in motion and we colored them with some colored pencils or some, some form of tool that provided color. We layered our drawings. We thought about the shapes or the wings as something we could see through. And we played with the edges and the lines and creating some interesting shapes as we overlap them, as well as creating a thrust of movement. So um, I wanted to share the butterfly page because I had an opportunity to work on it a little bit more since the, uh, since the lesson, and I wanted you to see the progression of it. 
I, I know that my pages are constantly, come on, Da Vinci Go. My pages are a uh, work in process all the time, and I won't be surprised to see more layers get added to this page as our class progresses. So um, just wanted to share that with you. And I would love to see your butterfly pages too. Feel free to take photographs of them. You can post them in the thread of the original video. You can post them here. You can put them anywhere on social media that you wish. I just ask that you use the hashtag journal through it uh, so that everybody can, can do a search for that tag and see what we are working on collectively and support each other's creative efforts. Um, yeah, so that, that's the update on, on the butterflies. So today I wanted to talk to you about collage and using, using collage as a means to take us into something that's abstracted. Where is my, here it is. So the idea of taking an image and abstracting it is nothing new. It's something that has been done uh, historically. Actually, how about if I hold this up? I'll bring this up closer. Uh, but, you know, abstraction is essentially when an artist takes what they see representationally, but they choose not to render it in complete, tight, uh, actual detail. Instead, they choose to use it as a starting point to share their, their emotions or their feelings about an experience related to the object. What they're doing is the artist is infusing that object or scene with something more personal and it elevates the image into uh, a much more sacred sort of scene or experience. And I'm gonna bring this in closer. So this is uh, Vincent van Gogh and it's his Starry Night painting we can look at this painting and see very clearly that it's a landscape. But when you look at this landscape, you, you have a very powerful feeling of it. Uh, it. It's very different than standing in your backyard and looking at a nighttime sky. Van Gogh has brought his own fascination for the enormity of the sky, for constellations and light, uh, the shape of those cypress trees, the silhouette, uh, as well as the village sort of nestled in uh, trying to sleep or, or maybe being uh, sheltered or protected or uh, blanketed by the sky. It, it's up to us to interpret this. But however we look at it, there is no doubt in our minds that Van Gogh was very passionate about the sky and rendering this particular scene for viewers. This is one of the very earliest abstract paintings and that Van Gogh allowed his emotions and his feelings about the scenes and the people in his life and the things in his life, he allowed those emotions to, he depicted those in paint. He didn't just focus on the objects themselves. And so what I want to share with you today is a strategy that we can use when we uh, choose some collage items and, and we can infuse our collages with our own emotions and, and joys and desires and things that fascinate us and create something similar to the experience of Starry Night using collage. Now what is collage? Collage is simply the assembling of objects that weren't originally meant to go together. So collage is a matter of taking, whoops, my book is upside down, taking things and reassembling them with intention. So for instance, this collage, this is a page in one of my journals, and this collage is made up of a tiny, this is a little paper bag that I loved. It had polka dots on it, and I love dots. This is... I don't think it's a sticker. I think I cut this out of maybe a, a shopping bag. Um, and it was originally a compass signal. There's a north right here, but I intentionally twisted it and misaligned the north to represent how we can sometimes feel wonky or a little confused. Excuse the dogs. 
This is a business card from my friend Kate Dardine. I absolutely love her paintings and this this business card has one of her paintings on it that really moved me and um, I, wa I wanted to include it in this collage because of the elements of the shared color schemes, the variety of shapes. Um, it just really, it made me happy when I put it together. And then this is just a simple drawing that I added with a, with a paint pen over top. So this is a collage made of very simple elements, but once they're assembled together, they tell, uh, they tell a story. Uh, this is on the facing page. Here's another collage. This is another friend. This is Lauren Finn. Lauren, if you're watching, hi, do you see your artwork here? This is Lauren Finn's business card and it's glued down over a torn piece of painting which is glued down over top of a piece of magazine paper. And then this is a sticker that I just put over. I think this is actually trash from a, from a card, sticker used to seal a card. And then in this case, I added some shading with a, with a soft pencil. So these are two really simple collages that are built out of objects that I happen to encounter and for whatever reason, they spark joy in me, so I set them aside. Just as a quick little note or reminder that I use envelopes and either glued in to my journals or tucked into the pages of my journals so that when I do, try to reach in here, and when I do encounter wonderful little things, ooh, look at that, there's a feather in there. Um, when I encounter wonderful little treasures, I have a spot to tuck them into my folder or my envelope, and that keeps them safe for when I'm ready to do collages. So let's go back to these collage pages. Where are they? So going back to these collage pages, this is one way that you can uh, create a collection of images or things that spark your delight, that make you happy. Uh, you can collage in a journal like this. You can collage on some loose paper. I have, I have a stack of collages here that I have done and I'll just go through these real quickly so you can get a sense of what they look like. These collages are ones that are built from textures, colors, and patterns that thrill me. And I use these collages all the time as inspiration for when I'm working on paintings. What I like to do with old magazines before I throw them out, I just page through them. I tear it or cut out whatever thrills me. And then I'm able to use those bits and pieces in these sorts of collages as I reassemble entirely new things that are already made from images that I've curated or chosen as things that make me happy. So, these are collages done on loose paper. You've seen collages done in my book. Um, I also have, I call this my box of fascination. This is an old cigar box that a good friend gave me. And this box happens to be full of little bits, images that thrill me. These pieces might be a little bit bigger than what I've glued down on other, on other collage pages, but it's the same idea. These are things that absolutely thrill and delight me. Images that for whatever reason I've chosen them because they fascinate me in some capacity. And I can use them as a starting off or a jumping off point for, you know, another piece of artwork or a journal page or uh, a sort of detail to embellish in a painting. So I'm going to set this over here. Let me clear my workspace. So what I would like for you to do is find some books, some magazines that you can cut out of. 
ask if, if you're uh, younger, if you're, if you're a, a smaller size little, ask your parents before you cut into any published material. Uh, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to um, start your day out with tears or, or getting somebody angry with you. Um, look at, these are just, these are pages that I've, I just did a big magazine purge a couple weeks ago. So these are all pages of things that I've got that I absolutely, absolutely really love. And, and here's just a couple of magazines. So as an example of what I do when I look through, it's really easy when we go through a magazine to start to read. Text demands our attention. Faces demand our attention. So when I do this exercise, I try not to look at faces and I try not to read, although it's, it's hard. Where'd my scissors go? What I'm looking at is visual only, things that thrill me. So it, it takes a little bit of focus to, uh, to ignore the call of text and, and the connection of other faces. I love the light in this, and I love the shapes of the flowers. I love the fact that the flowers are to the side. They're facing us. They're kind of three-quarter view. Some of them are open all the way. Some of them are almost close to being tired. I love, I love that combination. So I'm just going to flip through. I'm not going to read. I'm just looking looking at pages, looking for something that tells me to stop, that stops my heart. That. Is that light fixture not to die for? Nothing else in this photo really intrigues me that much. Ooh, but look, it's reflected in the mirror. So let's, let's cut that out and set that aside. Maybe working through a magazine upside down and backwards is a way to trick your brain into not looking at things. Ooh, I love that. Sort of mobile and all the nuance of the greens. So I'm going to cut that out. And I'm using scissors because clean edges thrill me. If you don't want to use scissors, just rip the pages out. You do not have to be meticulous about this because this exercise is about doing something that's joyful. It's about collecting all of these images and things that make you pretty happy. Ooh, this. Something about the edge of that railing and light and that pop of yellow. So this is how I like to spend my time. Just downtime, you can do this when you're watching TV or waiting for a load to finish in the dryer, whatever. Oh, that rug is amazing. As well as the texture of that door, I'm gonna take that whole page. So I've, I've collected just a few images here that I really love. I'm going to move these pages out of the way. And then the next thing that I want to do is sort of uh, curate them. I'm going to give us an, a fresh, clean page here. Curate these images into something that's a bit more fascinating. Um, build some relationships, some unexpected relationships between the things that I just tore out I have a few here that I pulled out earlier in the day as well. And what I want to do is build a sort of like free form build this collage before I choose to glue it down. Um, geez, I love this. So I'm just going to set it here. And I'm looking at this dark shape and I'm thinking that it sort of creates movement this way. So maybe I want it over here. Let's see what happens. A 
What's so fun is the unexpected collision of things that maybe would never be encountered side by side. Like the like the uh, roses or the tulips with the with the crochet. The other thing that I do when I have, when I cut things out of fashion magazines is that I will often remove the heads from the image and there's nothing like cruel or hateful in that. I just simply cut them off because I find that they distract me from what my actual intention is. And if I want, if I ultimately want this to end up being a figure, I can add a head later. But having that head right there from the very beginning um, tends to distract me. Look at, look at that. Now we have a figure just like that. Maybe I don't need this here. What happens when I remove that? Ooh, isn't that cool? It's like a figure right there. So here's another figurative piece. I'm going to take her, her off, or her head off. Sorry, whoever you are. It's nothing personal. And I also try to rotate things so that they aren't, they aren't in the same orientation necessarily as when they came out of the page. I love that combination together there. This is actually the original head to that model. But what would happen if I put it down here and I swapped that? I think it would need to be like that. Ooh, that's interesting. And as I'm working, let's see. I love this circle thing. What if I move this all over here? See, this is one of the beautiful aspects of being able to work freeform style is that you can audition your parts on different backgrounds and see how you like them. I actually think I might cut this green piece in half. Let's try that. And you can see how you like them without being married to already having pasted them down in some way. So if I put this, and actually, you know what? Even though these are all rectangular, I'm going to play off the circle part here. Or the circle feeling. And I'm going to do that. And then let's put, let's put her here. I want, no, I think I want the head there. Hmm. And I guess, you know, there's no um, right or wrong way to do this because it's all about putting together things that make you feel good. So what will work for you is entirely different than what's going to work for me. As much as I love this little piece, I don't think it's the right one for there. So I'm just continuing to go back and forth until I find something that works, that feels right. 
pulling a couple other pieces out of. Ooh, that, that gives a nice sort of feel to the skirt and the fall of the skirt, doesn't it? So when you have your collage put together, when you freeform style your collage and, and you have an idea of how it's going to sit on your page, then the next step is to glue it down. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can, if your collage is super complex, you can take a cell phone photo so that you can remember where all your pieces are before you put them back in, or before you lift them off the page. Because in order for me to collage this, I have to glue the piece at the bottom of the stack, I have to glue that piece down first. So, and that would be this one. But in order to glue this down, I'm going to have to move all the other ones. So I can take my, I can use my cell phone to take a picture of it first. And then I'll know exactly where how, or how to align things. Or I can re, I can slide everything over if you have the room on your workspace and slide things over. like that better with a bit of dark between the two spaces. So I've slid everything over here and that's going to tell me how I want things glued down. Now there's a couple of different types of glue that you can use with um, collage and realistically you use whatever you have on, ho on hand at home. Um, today I'm going to be using acrylic matte medium. This is not a mayo jar. Well, this is a mayo jar. It doesn't have mayo in it anymore. I'm going to use acrylic matte medium. It's just basically a clear sort of acrylic paint. And I can brush it on really easily. And it will provide a great glue surface for my collage to adhere to. Um, so I just squeeze a little bit of it on the page and I like to use an old brush because I'm going to be applying a lot of pressure and I'm going to move my excess medium. See, I'm kind of using a scoopy motion and move that over to the side of the page. So it's out of the way. So I have a good layer of medium and I'm going to put this right down in place. And what you want to do is pick up a little bit of medium and put over top of it. If you're using a glue stick uh, or Elmer's, you don't you don't need to do that step. Um, I, I use it with the medium. So now I'm going to put this down and I'm going to put it right here. Because I put glue over the whole page to begin with, it's Still got a little bit of glue there, or I mean it's adhering. And you may get wrinkles. See, look, I'm getting some wrinkles here. That's the nature of gluing with magazine paper. It's not going to be perfect, and um, that's okay. You just kind of have to accept that. It's not, it's not a perfect science or a perfect process. That's not what we're about here. We're about just creating something to inspire us. We're not hanging this on our wall. It's not going in any museum. Okay, I think I'm going to set 
set this off. Hmm, how about if I angle it a little bit? Yeah, look at that. And then we will put you down here, Missy. I'm pushing pretty hard with my brush. That's why I'm using an old one because I just don't want to ruin a brand new paintbrush. Now I have it on here, but what if... No, I like it better this way. And I'm going to stagger it so it comes up here a little bit more. Oh, and there's no glue left. I could tell because there was no stickiness there. So I'll put a little bit more down. I'm going to try to move this over. Oh, oh, I did not even see that side of it. That's pretty cool too, isn't it? And then I'm going to glue this down. And now I have this lovely collage on one of the pages of my journal that I can use. And I'm going to show you how to use it next as inspiration for what's going to go on this journal page. So I'm going to set this over here and let it dry. Well, let me put these bits away first. So, that, so if I set this up here and let it dry, what I want to show you is Here's another journal, and I did the same process here, bring it in closer. This is actually, I, I intentionally did a figure. She's built out of all sorts of different shapes and bits of things, including, I'm not even really sure what the shape is, but I accidentally dropped it. It was a scrap and I dropped it on top of her head and I loved it. It looks like a hat, so I left it. Um, this is just a collage that I did in a composition notebook. Look, there's another one. So these were all already bits or details of something that thrilled me. And I assembled them into a composite image that thrilled me. And then I did a drawing on the opposing page using things from the collage as inspiration or starting points for the actual drawing itself. So you'll see we still have this main figure here. She has a much larger headpiece on and I added a flower to the middle of it because I love flowers. Uh, this shape here became a giant flower on her shoulder the detail here from the cuff of the costume is almost like the bodice of her dress. You'll see this draped floral fabric has become part of her gown, as well as the necklace, the beading. And then there's, there's also a woman here. Let me rotate this. So there's a figure here, and these are almost like feathers coming out of her hat, aren't they? the beads in this orientation. So I've drawn her head here and she's got this wonderful beaded beaded hat. She has a great embellished shoulder, sort of a padded shoulder, and her costuming drapes down. And the drape of her costuming actually is part of the pattern from the background of this other woman's head. So these are ideas or concepts for future painting and the way I can weave or connect details from previous unrelated images into one cohesive image. I'm continuing to take these bits and pieces that I've edited and built a composition from. I'm editing them down even further and building another design from them. Uh, that's all created from, from tidbits, from juicy tidbits, like Ardith would call, call them, created from juicy tidbits that I absolutely love. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. Let's bring this back. 
And let me get a pen here. So I'm going to be using a Posca marker. You can use pen, pencil, uh, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, it does not matter. And what I'm going to do is that on this facing page, I'm going to build a composition that is inspired by this. Now, I'm not trying to draw this exactly. I'm going to take this and I'm going to abstract it a little. I'm going to add expressive sorts of marks and, a, and an expressive dynamic to what's here, sort of the same way that Van Gogh used expressive dynamics when we in his painting of the Starry Night. I'm also not necessarily going to try and retain the scale. And by scale, I mean drawing objects as though they're the same size. You can certainly do that if you wish, but let me bring this back. Do you see how the head here is much larger than this head over here? So I can change that scale by making something larger. I'm telling the viewer it's a little bit more important. So. When I start over here, I'm thinking that I want this rose to be a little bit bigger. So I am going to just draw this rose. But I think I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And as I draw this, I am simply allowing my eye to travel around the edges or the perimeter of the shapes that I see in the rose. Sort of like how we drew the butterfly wings the other day. This is called contour drawing. And there's all sorts of different ways that you can contour draw. You can do it blindly without looking at your paper. You can do it in a single line without ever allowing the lines to touch each other. You can do it all sorts of different ways. This is just a basic contour. And what I'm doing is I'm finding the shapes of light and, and the shapes of dark, and I'm drawing them. I'm drawing the outlines, the edges of them, just like they might appear in a coloring book, if there was a coloring book of that. So here, I've got this rose here, and now I'm gonna draw this woman's, or the figure's neck, and I'm gonna bring it up higher into the rose, and I'm also gonna draw it over top of The leaf shapes that I put in there, I thought the leaf shapes were really interesting, but they came down on the page a little bit further than I wanted. So in order to be able to fit all this other detail that I want, I'm going to have to use some distortion, which is something that Ardeth talked about yesterday. Um, So here I've created the edge of my figure, and I'm going to put a little bit of detail in here as to the light and how it's hitting her shoulders. I'm not, I'm not really trying to be perfect. I'm just suggesting some of the interesting shapes. I find these shapes are really cool. There's like a letter H in here. Like that's really fascinating to me. I think I want another row of beads. So again, with contour drawing, all I'm doing is allowing my eye to follow the edge the edge. You know what, how about if I follow with my finger over here so you can see. And it's it's not about being perfect. And it skips the space. And then there's kind of a bigger one here that's lighter or darker. You hardly see it. And there's a little one there and there. And there's one there. And there's another one. So it's mostly just about picking out the edges where where there's contrast where light hits dark 
That's pretty cool. And I love this sort of thing. So let's start, well actually I'm going to start out here because I don't want it to run over my page, but I'm not sure how much depth I'm going to have here, so I'm just trying to do some space management here. I will draw the contour of this particular flower, and I'm not even getting too much into what's going on in between or inside of it. I think collectively they will read okay, just like how we talked with the but about the butterflies. When you draw a whole bunch of similar objects, they don't all have to be perfect, but collectively they may tell a story and then our brain fills in the details. So look at that. This is really kind of cool. I think I want to add a little one here just because. So my challenge to you is, is twofold today. Well, actually, I guess it's threefold because your first, the first part of your lesson is going to be to go through some printed material and pull out things that, that thrill you, that make you happy. Uh, if, for whatever reason, you can't cut up the magazines you're working on, get creative. Use your cell phone and take pictures of those sorts of details. Take those pictures and then print them on your printer. Or send them to, send them to a, a drugstore or an online print or a lot, an online photo lab so that you can go pick them up and use the photos to collage with. Um, so you're going to build a collage out of imagery that you really like. And then what you're going to do is build a drawing from that Sorry, is my head in the way? Are you going to be able to see what I'm doing? I want you to build a drawing from that on an adjacent page or on an, if you're working on loose paper, do it on a loose piece of paper and do a couple of these. The more you practice, the more fun you're going to have. And actually, we're going to need a couple of these for Thursday's lesson. We're going to need a start on them. So whatever you can get done now will give you a jump start for Thursday and Friday's lesson, where this is gonna all roll into, into a bigger deal. So find images of things that thrill you, reassemble them in some fashion that makes, that uh, gives them new relationships with each other, whether you're building something on a page in your book or you're simply gluing them down on a separate page uh, and building relationships between the shapes. Then I want you to take that page and I want you to build a drawing from it and practice contour drawing. And remember that one of the things of contour drawing is that we're not getting a perfect image. That's not our goal. Our goal is to take the essence of this and recreate it with edge work uh, to abstract this into just lines so that it tells a story. Now we look at this collage here and we have a very, it's very obvious that these are pieces that are married together. When we look at this drawing now it becomes something else altogether and it's up to the viewer to use their imagination and figure out what might be going on here. And it's also going to be up to me as the artist to give some more information to this particular image. And I want to show you one other thing. So if this is super easy for you, or you're super fascinated, you want to dive in even more, here is another, another approach that you can take. So this is uh, a bit from my uh, box of fascinations. It's a lovely, gorgeous kimono that I fell in love with. And I decided that I was going to do a spin drawing from the kimono. Now spin drawing is where you draw an object 
and then you reorient either the object or your paper or both and you draw it again. So in this case, do you see this area right here on her shoulder? There's a yellow, or I mean, a pink flower, a blue flower, a green leaf, this orange lily, and all these wonderful leaves and stems. So that is this area right here. I drew this in pencil first. I drew this whole page in pencil first, and then I went into it with paint. So this shoulder area is right here. Then I decided I loved the shape of this cuff with the red trim. So look, I drew it here. I did not account for the amount of distance between the original floral design and the cuff. I just drew it wherever I felt like it because I could. Then I rotated my inspiration. And when I rotated it, I asked myself, what's the first thing that I see here? Well, the first thing I saw that really made me happy was this little line with the V. So look what I did. I put the little line with the V right there. And I saw this other cuff shape. So I drew the cuff shape in there. And then I rotated it again. And I asked myself, what jumped out at me in this orientation? Well, what jumped out at me here was this. This lily here with the open one next to it. So look, that's what I drew in. And then I added this green stem later, or stamen, I'm not really sure. I don't even know that it's necessarily in there. But I added it later, or after the fact, so that these weren't just floating down here. I felt like they needed the connection there. And then I went in with my paints and I, neg I, or I, um, I just filled the spaces in. I started by using colors inspired from here, but ultimately I, I changed and took a little bit of artistic license. So for those of you who are really comfortable with contour drawings, who've already done a lot of collage, I wanted to give you a challenge to further push yourselves um, and play some more in the coming two days. Oh, this is just another one that I did from, from another similar concept where I had a reference photo and I was rotating it and drawing different elements from that photo and building a new composition. So now would be the time for me to check and see if we have any questions. Let me pull up on my phone and see what we have. Uh, yeah, Debbie suggested that, I, oh no, you need to be quiet. We're not going to play this video again. Uh, Debbie suggested that a good way to view the magazines is upside down because the pages look differently. Yes, that's very true. Um, anytime we can disengage our brain from trying to label or identify things. It helps us to just see them for uh, exactly what they are. So um, great suggestion, Debbie. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Debbie asks, on gluing, if you wet the magazine pages, it removes the sizing and the pages don't wrinkle. Yes, that's very true. Um, in some instances, if you do find that your pages are wrinkling an awful lot, if you have a shallow bowl of water next to you, you can wet them in that and then glue them down and they won't get quite as wrinkly. I did not do that this morning because I was afraid from a drying standpoint it would uh, make the, the lesson a little bit longer. Dana, you're asking if past courses are available. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Yes, all of the past classes are available. They are all delivered via FaceTime in a live stream format so far. I have a number of them up, as well as Ardith Goodwin, who is uh, my friend and fellow painter, and she is sharing lessons on opposite days from me. So there is a page on my website called Journal Through It. If you go to KimberlySantini.com, you'll find a page called Journal Through It. 
and that page will include all the information about what we've uh, shared so far as well as direct links to each of our individual content. Um, so yeah, it's all, it's all up there. It's all there for you to go through at your own pace. We are delivering lessons right now. It's six days a week. We may go down to five depending on how much participation we get on the weekends. We don't want to overwhelm you guys. Um, but that's, that's where we're at. So it doesn't look like there's any more questions. Oh, Richard asks if too much paint is bad because the last one you did became wrinkled and crispy. Well, Richard, that's a really good question. And there's a lot of different factors that could impact how wrinkled your page got. Uh, it, it, I think it all hinges on the substrate that you're using. And I'm going to bring this, this um, collage back because you can see that this one is it's pretty wrinkly. And if you go on the back side of it, you can really see in my writing how wrinkly it is. That's because this is really, oh, this is a good, you can really see the wrinkleness here. This is really uh, light white paper, and it's not designed to get wet. It's designed primarily for writing on. So if you use paper that has a little bit more of a substance to it and can absorb the moisture, you may not get that wrinkling effect. But if you approach your painting and you're using a lot of water and in addition to the moisture that's in the paint itself, you may encourage your surface to wrinkle some more. So what I would suggest is that you do a little bit of experimenting on different sorts of papers and see if the paper itself could be part of the problem. Um, and also pay attention when you're painting to how much moisture or water you're adding to your paints themselves. Uh, because that could also be part of the problem. Uh, the more pigment you have, the, the, the heavier the pigment load of the paint, the tighter the paint's going to be to the surface and the less wrinkling you're going to have. The more water that you introduce, that gets soaked up into the paper's fibers and causes them to expand or shift in some capacity. And then you may, uh, it, that's what creates the wrinkled effect. So these pages are fairly um, sturdy. This is a mixed media paper, and it's pretty sturdy, and it's got a good amount of paint on both sides, but it hasn't really wrinkled much uh, because I haven't added a whole lot of water to it. Um, these pages have a, they have a good amount of water, but they and they do have some wrinkle to them, but not a whole lot. And I think this paper is pretty forgiving because it's so thick and um, meant to take, take a little bit more uh, moisture than something like a, a notebook paper or a copy paper might accept. So great question, I'm glad that you asked that. Okay, Julie would like a brief recap as to what we need to have ready for the next lesson. Okay, Julie, so for the next lesson, what I would really like to see you have are a few of these collages, either in your book or on loose paper like these ones. Okay, so these are going to be freeform collages that are full of imagery of things that make you smile, that thrill you. And then I want you to have at least two loose pages. So these are these are like eight and a half by eleven, and this is cardstock. I want you to have two loose pages with a contour drawing started. On, on both of them and maybe a little bit of color added if you want to go in and add add some color to them similar to what I did here. Color can be added with crayons, color pencil, watercolor, acrylic paints. Uh, your color could be additional collage if you want. Um, be creative, make it your own because we're going to take these two extra loose pages that you're working on and we're going to use them to create something else but I don't want you to start with um, naked or plain pages I want you to have some marks on them already that's going to make them even more special as we start the next lesson so um, I hope that I hope that helps you or answers your question any other questions no? it looks like we're all done okay so 
Again, if you are looking for previous classes, go to my website, KimberlySantini.com. There is a page there called Journal Through It. That includes links to all of our previous lessons. It's going to include a schedule for the upcoming days so that you can see or know who to tune into, where to watch. Ardith is going to be leading a lesson tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, and that will be streamed on her Facebook page, Ardith Goodwin, uh, at noon tomorrow. And then I will be back on Thursday morning at 10 Eastern, uh, and that will be streamed from my page. Um, and I think that's it. Again, encouraging you to share your stuff. Love to see what you're creating. Uh, when you share it on social media, please hashtag with journal through it. I'm having a great time at the end of the day when I sit down and decompress. I throw that uh, journal through it hashtag in my search engine and I'm seeing so many wonderful little pieces. Um, it just really makes me smile. It's a great way to cap off my day. So um, I know many other people are enjoying looking at them too. So that is that for our collage into abstraction lesson today. I hope you have a great time exploring uh, the bits and pieces of collage that you find and as you put these snippets together and weave a whole new image just for yourself. So get to it and I can't wait to see what you do. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.